Okay, here's an example of creating a task in a Microsoft Flight Plan, in other words, using the updated B21 Task Planner. So it's a web-based task planner. The link to it is in the comments below. Um, it supports multiple map styles. Different, it's loading different map tiles that go underneath. Uh, you know what you're seeing here. Um, so some are better for looking at, for example, the Appalachian Ridges. Stamen Terrain is particularly good for looking at the Appalachian Ridges. I really like this map style. And we have satellite as well. If we zoom in, there's Mifflin Airport. Um, another reason to use multiple map sources is even though this top one is, you know, generically um, open street map, so it's always going to be fine. But the others, they're free, you know, as with open street map itself. So sometimes the, um, the speed or, or whatever it is of the map tiles will be better or not so good. And so you've just got a set of options. Um, but it's worth having so that you can just, if you're doing the ridges, it's, it's really quite nice to be using, for example, as uh, stamen map tiles. Okay, here's an example of uh, uh, creating a map. These blue circles are Microsoft Flight Simulator airports. These green circles are additional eight airports. I found 8,218 of them, which are airports that are in an open source airports database, ourairports.com, that weren't in Microsoft Flight Simulator. So you have to start and finish the flights for a Microsoft Flight Plan on a Microsoft airport. So let's say we're going to launch at Mifflin. It's a Microsoft airport, so we do know which runways it has as far as Microsoft is concerned. Let's say we're going to start at runway 24. And this application has already picked the altitude out of the height, uh, for the data for that, for that particular airport. So we're kind of good to go there. Uh, then let's say we'll have a, a user waypoint, which is going to be a, a rail river crossing here. You just click. Basically, we're adding waypoints just by cl cl clicking uh, on the map once for each waypoint. Okay, I don't know what the name of that bridge is because it's a rail bridge. In this case, it's called B21 Bridge. Okay, the elevation has already been looked up at 512 feet, which is kind of pretty handy. Let's say we're going to give this waypoint a radius of 500 meters. No, okay, let's make it 1,000 meters. The units for these uh, distances and heights and things are all optional. You can set them in settings. What actually gets put into the flight plan, obviously, will be Microsoft Standard. Um, but you can choose whatever it is you want to look at. Okay, so it's B21 Bridge. Then Eagle Field, which is a great gliding club up here. Great for um, uh, record-breaking ridge runs. Add that as a waypoint. We'll give that a radius of 1,000 feet. 1,000 meters, I'm sorry. Um, and then we will return to Mifflin. I'll just click on the blue circle. I guess it's back to Mifflin. Okay. Now, what we want is we want the start and end waypoints to be airfield waypoints. The flight plan's got two kinds of waypoints in it. It's got airfield waypoints and it's got user waypoint waypoints. For gliding, user waypoints are more useful because they're kind of all better off as far as Microsoft is concerned. So you can, you can make the name whatever you want. Uh, you can tweak additional data in there. Um, for airports, the only thing that Microsoft is going to take is the code, and then it's going to load its own data for everything else. Uh, and that works fine for start and finish airport, but it really mocks you about when you're trying to do what we've done here with these intermediate waypoints. So this um, start airport is fine. We're going to launch on runway 24, KRVL Mifflin, 813 feet. It's going to work like a charm. Um, B21 bridge is fine. Eagle field, I'm going to edit. Even though it was an airfield, it's been created as a user waypoint in that the code for the airfield has been added. We didn't throw it away. We added it to the name of the airfield. Um, we didn't put it in the ICAO field, and that is what's going to determine that when this gets stored in the flight plan, it's going to be a user waypoint, not an airport waypoint. Okay, but we didn't need the code. Uh, these names are what's going to appear when you look at it in the nav instrument in the glider. Uh, or your Cessna, if that's what you're flying around here. Okay. So, at that point, we've got a working flight plan. I'm going to refine it a little bit, um, because what you really want is you want a start point that isn't the same as you don't want to start the second the propeller starts turning pulling you along the runway um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add i'm going to select mifflin county as my current waypoint 
Anytime you click on the map, it adds a waypoint after the current waypoint. Okay, so the current waypoint is the first one. I'm going to click back here, add another waypoint, and I'll call it Mifflin Start. Um, you see it's already set 771 feet. Check the start box. Um, give it a radius of 1,000 meters. I'm actually going to give it a maximum altitude of 5,000 feet. And we're good to go. Okay, and similar in principle, I'm going to go to equal field and set waypoint after that one, which is going to be the finish. Okay, so I am going to come down here and say, okay, we're coming, we're coming back from Eagle Field towards this airfield. We're going to set the finish line anywhere around here. I'll set it here. See that? It's inserted a waypoint. Yeah, if I if this make more sense when I check the finish box. There, that is the finish line. I'm happy with the default radius. I call that Mifflin finish. You could give it a minimum altitude if you wanted to. So if Mifflin's at 800, and, uh, say this one's 804 feet, you say you've got to, the minimum height. You've got to be at 904 feet. So you've got to be 100 feet above the ground when you when you come in. I'm not a huge fan myself of of setting these kind of rules. Um, you can always check it if if you're going to check a competition flight even in the simulator properly you would need a log file and then you'd look at the log file and you could check the height that people kind of came over but we'll encode it in here and then we'll be able to use it in the instruments in the glider when I've modified those to do it. This ground elevation is 100% used by the nav panel in the uh, AS33 and that instrument's going to be put in other gliders. Okay so if you look over here because I've checked the start box for that waypoint and I checked the finish box for that waypoint they're recognized here and that 110 kilometers is between the start and the finish. It's kind of ignoring these little bits on either end, which all makes sense. So at that point, this 110 kilometer flight is perfect. We can, um, I'll show you Sky Vector briefly, which is, um, it's a third party website. It's very, very good. It's got data on every airport. Um, what I'm doing, it's impossible for you to import the data. I mean, it's a commercial website that makes money from advertising or whatever it does. What it does do though is it allows you to line the maps up so I know where you're looking on this map, what the latitude and longitude of the middle of it is, what scale you're at, and I line that up with Sky Vector. It will open another tab with Sky Vector in it. You see here's Mifflin in the middle of the map. Um, it's been lined up and it's kind of quite useful if you um, want to look up data on the airport you're looking up. You can use this icon here, airports, and type, I don't know, KRVL into it. Take a, so you put the code in, it'll take us straight to the airport. If you type in a word, it gives you a list of these are the airports I found with that word in the name. Here you go, so there's the information on Mifflin County Airport. And you'll see with a bit of luck, they'll agree with Microsoft what runways are, runways are 0624. Okay, which is also what Microsoft thinks, which is a plus. See, so Sky Vector's got the, the sort of general aviation map in it with airspace and zones in it and stuff like that. Plus it's got an air, airport database on it, so it's generally useful. Okay, so that's what that does. Then if you want to download the flight plan, you simply click this download flight plan button. Okay, and it appears down here and you can find it in the folder and copy and paste it into your Microsoft flight plans folder. I'm actually going to demonstrate something else, which is I've opened the folder window. I'm going to hit click the reset task or I could just refresh the page. That will go. So, um, go off somewhere else. If I drag and drop the flight plan, I'm dragging, you can't see me doing it, I'm actually dragging the flight plan from somewhere else, from the folder it went into, and I'm about to drop it where it says drop MFS flight plan here on the left hand side. You'll, there you go, I kind of dropped it. So that is this flight planner starting again from scratch, but loading a Microsoft flight plan. So it can both download flight plans, but also if you've got an existing flight plan, you can drag and drop it onto that box there, and then you can edit it from here and it's always with a compatible flight plan if you add things uh, like ground elevations and things like that they can get encoded into the flight plan in a way that specially written gliding gauge because can find it and understand it but the flight plan is always compatible so it's quite useful actually if you've got FSX flight plans or things like that you can drag and drop them on here mess them about a bit add zones 
Oh, uh, last thing I should have told you, by the way, which is, if you're not sure, maybe you're just trying to do it by checking the distance. You can drag, you can drag any any waypoint you've got. You can drag it around and uh, adjust adjust your flight plan. That is quite good if you're trying to tweak it so that it's going to be, say, you're just a little bit under 300 kilometers, but you're trying to set a 300 kilometer task or whatever it is. You can do that tracking. All right, so I think that's about it. Good luck.